The NHIS is voluntary. In the United Kingdom where it works, you get money cut out of your salary up front if you work. Here is voluntary. Only those that work as federal government or state government employees, do they get their money taken at source and put into the pool. So the pool is essentially populated by federal government employees and few voluntary people that, that, that go into the program. The very few cannot pay for the many. Shouldn't that be, I mean, the people who pay, shouldn't that be the cover for them? Why are we trying to take the money that a few pay to cover the entire country? Good. It's very good. So it's there in our cultures and in all scriptures. This is the reality of our situation. We, the strong, help the weak. You, the healthy, help the sick. And those that have, help those who do not have. Even in wealthy countries, it is the rich that subsidize the poor. In the United States, in the UK, everywhere in the Western world, the taxes of the rich help the poor. Shouldn't it be that everybody will pay something, but according to your capacity? No, that is true. So even, even, even the payment within the system now, the government takes a percentage of the salary and put it in the pool. Mm -hmm. So it is how much you earn that goes into the pool. But it's essentially government employees that are covered. This is the point I want to make. That the people we need to reach out to are those that are, are not employed by federal government or state governments, those that cannot pay for themselves. There is four, There are four cardinal uh, recommendations by WHO how to fund universal health care coverage. Number one, governments should prioritize on reducing out of pockets for their people. Over 60-70% of our, of our health care spending is out of our pockets. Number two, governments should maximize mandatory prepayment instead of voluntary as it is. And number three, enlarge the pool. That's what I'm trying to do. The larger the pool, the more we are able to pay for those who cannot pay for themselves. What about but four, mm -hmm. and most importantly, governments should try and pay for those who cannot pay for themselves. What about the first two? The first two about maximizing those, uh, you know... The mandatory. Are, yeah, making right. it mandatory. Correct. And that's why we are, talk we are talking and working with our elected representatives that in our act, what we want as amendment, make NHIS contribution mandatory instead of voluntary as it is. And we are working with them and they are listening to us and they are, they are hearing us and they will work with us. Make it mandatory. But this is the reality in Nigeria. What percentage of Nigerians are gainfully employed by either government or private? We have to think of those that are not employed. The rural and urban poor, that we should not neglect. This government is pro-poor. Whatever we do, we need to think of those who cannot pay for themselves. Let us take some questions now from my colleagues in Lagos. Well, Professor Osman, could, could you tell us, do you think that there is a 351 billion era fraud in the scheme? Did you hear me? Uh, I'm asking, do you think that there is a 351 billion era fraud in this scheme? In the NHIS? Yes. Yes. So I see all numbers thrown around. And if I'm to respond to all the numbers, it is... It is. Any number you hear outside the NHIS coming from out of, not from, from my mouth, is questionable. I have the facts, I have the numbers. So Give 350 million, I don't know, billion, I don't know where people got it from. So tell us then, from me. what figures are we talking about, are we, or should we be looking at here? If you can hear me, Prof, I'm asking, what exactly is the amount in question here?
Well, I hope we're going to sort this out. Uh, can you hear me, Prof? Doesn't look like this is working. Well, it does seem like we're having some yeah. challenges with the audio from Lagos. Uh, but Chamberlain, if you can repeat your question, perhaps we'll hear you again. Well, uh, I'm asking Prof to tell us, because we're trying to find solutions. Is there fraud there, and what figure specifically are we talking about here? Did you get catch that? Is there fraud there? Yes. Yeah. Right. Is there corruption in the NHIS? Yes. There's corruption everywhere in this country that we met. To the tune of how much would you say? So, people make a lot of mistakes. There are three payments that we make to HMOs to either pay hospitals or for themselves. Right? One is their admin fee. That is the fee they get for administering the rest of the fee. The other is capitation. NHI, uh, the, the, the HMO should just serve as conduit. We give them the money for capitation and they pay hospitals. And the other is fee for service. If a patient or his family go to hospital, they charge the HMOs and the HMOs pay. Three forms of payment. So we look at over the last 12 years. This is what I did when I came. I asked for numbers all over the last 12 years. How much have we paid? How much has come into the NHIS? How much has reached where it needs to be? Because the whole purpose is money to reach the hospitals. You alleged padding. Um, your first appearance, you said that uh, there was padding. Um, <laughs> You begged the apologies from the lawmakers. Uh, you, you, you compared what was going on with the subsidy of petroleum products, but you said the difference is that people were losing their lives. Why does padding come in here? Good. We are in the business of dealing with the lives of human beings. So this is just not an ordinary ministry or an ordinary MDA. We're dealing with the lives of people. We went to medical school to do good. So we as doctors, when we see this, we get really, really very angry. I'll tell you, we pay HMOs based on the number of enrollees or lives they have, right? These things were not done biometrically. Just like you have ghost workers in state, local and federal government, so also there was an artificial increase in the number of lives. Because what I found, what I did was to find out how much have we been paying. The number keeps going up, up, up and down. Up, up, up. There is no commensurate increase in the number of employees by the federal government. There is no death. There is no retirement. And it's based on that we pay. And it's very clear from investigations in the past by security agencies that the database has been violated and numbers increase. So how much would you say the NHIS was paying to HMS that was not supposed to be paying that? We're still investigating. And in the last, since I've been here, our investigation, we've been able to purge. And this is not news. It's been in the newspapers. I've said it. We've been able to purge off the register 23,000 ghost enrollees. So if we pay 1,000 a month per enrollee, that is 23 million naira monthly. And annually that will amount to 288 million that we would have paid. It's a lot of money. It's people's money. We will come back and we will talk about, you know, the solutions that you are bringing to the table to ensure right. that Nigerians are able to get the service they deserve. Uh, that will be in just a moment. Please stay with us.